Letterman. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. That's right. Got my new uh, <clears throat> my new um, new Surface Pro Eight. Wow, I think I'm still on three. <laughs> we just got uh, authorized as resellers, commercial resellers through our distributors for those. So oh, very cool. I went ahead and picked up one because I've been wanting one for a while. So I know that's not what this is about today, but unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. No. Today we uh, well welcome everybody. We are the reboot. Today we're going to talk about uh, information rights management, um, sensitivity labeling, um, and give you some examples. And well, first of all, an understanding of what that is, and then some examples and, and ways in which you can uh, implement this this process into your own company. Um, before we get started here, I am Brian Bradshe with BNL PC Solutions, based out of Long Island, New York. And I am Dave Groot with Windstar Technologies, based out of Culpeper, Virginia. Welcome, welcome. Um, so information rights management, again, so so a lot of the stuff that we, we do tend to talk about security and um, I'm sure uh, with, with fair certainty that some of this kind of sounds, there's some, some overlapping uh, discussions yeah. that we have and that's fine. Um, but there are, they, they may sound similar, but they, they everything we talk about is, is, is sort of unique and uh, specific in its own way. Mm -hmm. Um, so information rights management in a nutshell, and I'm sure Dave, you can kind of sweep up after me. Um, it's, it's more of a, uh, a, a discipline, um, that involves the managing, controlling, uh, and securing of content from unwanted access it, it, in a nutshell. It, it's a subset of what's called digital rights management, which has been around for a long time. And that's mm -hmm. where you have your, your copyright protections on your, on your DVDs and your audio on, on your digital media information rights is now extended that to the the corporate world and the end user experience um, which involves data encryption and a couple other things that we can talk about uh, mm -hmm. how do i do that all right no that's pretty good um okay. it's it's right on right on that everything you said was accurate okay good <laughs> <laughs> but i you know i mean so yeah the 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 information rights management when it comes to the microsoft ecosystem is certainly uh you know, it's part of that whole DLP, right? The data loss prevention. And then, uh, yes, like you said, the encryption and sharing externally or otherwise of, of company assets and, and, and sensitivity labeling. Now, I think it's important to make sure that we start by saying this requires enterprise licensing. So, yeah, I think I, I thought at one point it may have been included with business premium, but but maybe not. Maybe pieces of it were under the the security or the. Um, but but it, I I did check it out, and you're right. It, it it's at at the the e, the E three I think is the start of it, right? Yeah. So you got E three and then E five, and 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 you know E five is the granddaddy. You got everything kind of stuff. Um, with E3, there, there's also a package called E5 compliance and security. So you can take the compliance and security aspects, upgrades per se, of the E5 and apply them to E3. Um, I'm waiting to see Microsoft make it so that we can apply that to business premium because realistically right. that's, where the, that, that's where the need is. Um, I know the enterprise segment needs those things, but the small business when it comes to cybersecurity, ransomware, uh, insider threats, you know, all those kinds. Of, I mean, that's a huge open gap, uh, and 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 needs to be filled. Um, it's yeah, even in the, in the SMB, I mean, you got companies, you know, 50, 75 users. I mean, they're they're not maybe not considered the enterprise level, and, and they're already paying their twenty something a month for their business premium, and to get hit on top of that, um, again, it, it, it's it's another cost. That, that it is, but 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 think like. You're right, Brian. It is another cost. And at some point you got to start saying like, look, when are we losing uh, advantages, right? Like when is it costing more than the game? You know, it, it's a balance, right? But the bottom line is this, uh, as you start, like we, we recently implemented this and we're actually still in the process of kind of tweaking the, the policies and such in our, in our company. Um, and, and, you know, as you know, uh, when you start to grow and add more staff, all of a sudden information data becomes overwhelming, right? Because people are saving things in different locations. They're creating stuff on their own computers and saving it to their desktop. They're not putting it in the SharePoint, What you know, whatever's happening, right? And it goes all over the folk. 
So with this particular product or this particular service, you're able to classify buckets of data, right? So you can say, this is allowed to be shared externally. This is not allowed to be shared. This is like you said, uh, we can't print, we can't forward. We, you know, those are all the end result of being able to put in these labels and mm -hmm. then determine what actions can be taken with those particular labels. Um, and then you can set up defaults and, and, and it really does require you to kind of visit your data though. You're, 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 you're going to need to get a handle on that because there is no one size fits all and don't make the mistakes that I made and just say, okay, we're encrypting everything and nothing is shareable unless I say so. And then everybody in my organization the next day tells me, okay, every email we've sent out this morning has been encrypted and the people can't open them on the other side because you ought to label those emails as, you know, private information. <laughs> so yeah, now how does this, how does this come into play if someone is using an external encryption, email encryption service? So it, it's completely outside of that scope. The encryption itself is handled through the Microsoft ecosystem. And you can say when you're sharing, you can opt to uh, make them have to have a Microsoft account. It doesn't have to be in your tenant, but they have to have so that we can tell for sure they are who they say they are. Or you can make it an anonymous, uh, you know, uh, decryption capability or not even encrypted at all. Just depending right. on what it is you're looking to do. Um, you know, and again, the key element, why does any of this matter? I, I think it, it's about it's about knowing when things are being deleted, right? So like, let's say you have an employee who's disgruntled or who's getting ready to retire and just for whatever reason they you know lost it and they want to like walk out the door and blow the place yeah. up on the way out. You know, they start deleting all your data. You're going to kind of want to know that that's taking place, right? Or look legitimately you create a file and you share it with a partner externally and you forget and two years later that that share is still open right and and like okay the person you were dealing with at that company is no longer there but somebody else is in their department and they got access to it and, you know like it, it's okay maybe it's not you, but you got to be aware of it if you're not watching for those things it, you know if this is what these systems are helping us to do is to manage all that and i will say and i know i'm talking a lot i'm, I'm sorry but it's okay no it, it gets easier with all of these things. They seem like a very huge mountain of arduous work in front of you. And the only thing I can say is whittle away, do the easiest things with the greatest impact first, and just kind of start, you know, like what's the most important data? Okay. Yeah, Lock yeah. that down. I, I That's identify the that, right? I, yeah. Identify that. And you can actually do, you can have your, your, you know, IT company, or if you have IT in house, they can run an audit and find sensitive data to kind of just help try to tackle this. And again, this is not something that that maybe you have, maybe you don't have, you know, in house IT. And 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 right. if you're watching this as a as a a business owner or an, an end user, um, it's something that that um, your outsourced IT can certainly or should be able to to handle for you. Um, and and it so so the tests on our end are can be egregious, but that's, that's on us to, to mm -hmm. do that and accomplish that. And, and, you know, with the understanding that we're going to take, identify this data, whether it be for compliance purposes or HR purposes, whatever it is, um, and, and uh, identify that data and, and classify it, label it, and, and then, and then work with you on how we're going to limit the access to that data. Now, does this, this is kind of, even though it, it, it's similar to DLP, um, mm -hmm. DLP, is also a separate configuration also. And DLP is something that you do have access to in, in business premium. Uh, right. You know, basically, so just to kind of sort of, you know, differentiate between the two, if I can. Yeah, I think, it it's, I think it's important to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, the information rights management is, a, is about who can access, who can print, who can share, who can do the different things. But when it comes to DLP, let's say a, a good example would be somebody sending an email out uh, and it contains private information or social security number or banking uh, uh, routes, right? We can set up data loss prevention rules that detect that and then automatically force encryption upon that email so that it isn't sent clear text and therefore some kind of a data breach, right? Like, 
uh, that that's a very simple explanation of what it's yeah. for, but that's kind of, you know, it'll look for passport numbers. You can put any, any strings you want. You can create your content types, what it is you're looking to find and, and watch for. Um, but generally it's things like passports, banking information, social security numbers, GDPR, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, yeah. and, and it can catch that automatically. Right. As well as DLP is also about uh, outbound forwards and such, right? Like uh, for business email compromise, we want to make mm -hmm. sure that we know if there's a forward on a email account to an external email address, right? Because a hacker is trying to get emails sent to them so they can see what's going on or something like that. That's all yep. part of that DLP infrastructure. And they right. kind of work together. They do. They do. Now, um, somebody that has a let's let's talk about the average clients they have maybe one or two servers in-house file servers domain controllers they're just doing file and print sharing um and then they also have office 365 uh using teams um in, in some capacity um and 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 email now in order for for information rights management to to uh, to for, let's start with the encryption piece of it um, that data has to live in SharePoint, correct? So it starts, yes, the, uh, the SharePoint and OneDrive are your main focal points, but they so that's important moved. because a lot of people aren't, may not be using that right now and have all that's their, true. their stuff right on a file server, just sitting there saying, all right, let's do this. And it's not a matter of enabling it on that file server. It's a matter so of, it, it, it can be, it can it be is, I know. Yeah, yeah, there is, there is now ways that, uh, and they're, they're making it more and more, right? Like even with DLP, they're trying to move it to the infrastructure in-house aside from the cloud um right. uh, because it touches everything um yeah. and and yeah that that is a that's a unlimited you know that's where a sim product or you know i had to bring sim up brian it's just my <laughs> rule every time we talk uh it's my favorite new thing in life but but go. really i mean that is you know that's what that kind of stuff can help with right yeah so as far as you know, like we talked about, we identify the data that you want, and then, and then, mm -hmm. um, now we have to we have to kind of classify classify that data and 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 figure out who has access and what kind of access. Maybe 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 this department can read everything, but they can't right. change or edit, or they can't you know. And that gets done um, right on the on the Microsoft side of things. Once you yep, build that's up, that's the policy. policies that you're creating. Right. Yep, right. And, and you can it it can actually be intelligent where you can start to have it learn. Uh, based on content types and that kind of stuff where it'll auto classify as well. Okay. Okay. And then um, now you had mentioned talking about somebody that may, maybe had access to something, but then, you know, on, on the client side, but then has left the company and somebody has replaced them and um, you can put auditing um, tracks in there as well. Right. Yeah. You can put auditing, but you can also put expiration, right? So like when you're creating a share, you can say in 30 days, this share goes away. Uh, because we're done with the project. I mean, it's, you know, it, whatever. And you can always extend that or change it. I'm just, you know, using yeah. generalizations, but, but certainly, uh, yes, there is auditing. There's reports that you can pull that show every external shared file in the organization. Again, very important to understand this requires enterprise licensing to do that. Unfortunately, it's not involved in the business premium stuff. You can't, you can do a lot of things in business premium, but I cannot run a report that tells me what files have been shared externally. Yeah. Do you know how Microsoft licenses that tenant? Is is it for everybody has to have it or only the people that need access to it? It's just the people who need access to it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if someone wants to implement this. You can mix have, and match. Yep. You mm -hmm. can. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we can say that, you know what, there's, there's, there's 20 people in, in, you know, finance, compliance, accounting, whatever it is, those 20 people need to u use this. Yes. Um, but to have to have, you know, IRM set up, um, but yep. then the other 70 people just need business premium. Uh, but now how does that can that data coexist? Meaning that if I'm one of those people that that has this encrypted data. Um, well, it still falls into the bucket of are they like so who they it's are an internal yes. person. Right. But are they able to view that data? Right. Like, you know, so like in my office, I have internal only, which is everybody. But then there's need to know, and that's me, right? Like me and maybe Steph, right. you know, like like nobody else needs to know any of this information, but but it's internal, you know, and I can, I can, and I actually have a mixture of licenses throughout all the, you know, for, for my users and such. So okay. um, they cannot 
So they would have to be affected by the policy applied to a document or to a team or group or email, mm -hmm. um, but they would not be able to change them or add or classify. Does that make sense? Yep. They would only yep. be, you know, if they're allowed, they're allowed. If they're not right. allowed, they're not. Now, I've also seen information rights management applied to Outlook. I've, I've yeah, received emails. That's, where I, that's what I told you. I, I, I applied a encryption. Uh, you know, I, basically, I had a category called general, and, and that's just stuff that's not generally created for public consumption, but isn't necessarily confidential. Right. It's right. just internal things. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was a safe place to start. Well, that was encrypting and, and it wasn't sharing unless you gave explicit permissions. And so when you sent an email, by default, it was putting a general label on it and encrypting that. And so you couldn't no, the people on the other side couldn't open up the email. They couldn't read the messages. OK, okay. So I had to fix that. Yep. yep. Yeah. Wisely. <laughs> but that's what you know, I mean, that, that that's the part that you know, a with all this stuff, right? Zero. I mean, all of these things, you don't just throw it all in in one day and be done. You you right. have to ease right. in, you got to identify and you, you hit the high spots first, right? Like again, highest impact, lowest cost, lowest effort, whatever mm -hmm. that is, get those things taken care of it and immediately, and then start working on all the other little ancillary details. And, and, and over time you're going to get there. Yeah. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. Can, um, can a, vulnerability scan or a pen test uh test these policies do you know yes um I, it's funny you mentioned that because we're actually uh the people that we're working with that do our our third-party pen testing audits are developing um scans that will go through and look and see do you have sensitivity labels turned on and then look for problems in that configuration and set up as well as shared documents that might not be you know so it can be done um it's about here's the keys when you're in the microsoft ecosystem you need to make sure especially when you're on enterprise level in the compliance center which is now called purview you need to make sure auditing is turned on because by default it is not i thought they didn't change that to default it on no okay not from what i'm seeing okay uh, it, it's worth checking yeah. regardless sure. um because Definitely. if you have an older tenant or something like that it, it right. doesn't you know it didn't didn't get the the new deal or whatever but um just make sure that that's turned on because that's going to give you and i'll tell you um, one day, if you want, we'll get into it. I'll I'll share screens and we'll I'll show you the nitty gritty detail you can pick up in the Microsoft Cloud, just from the endpoint manager and Microsoft, you know, stuff being loaded on your computer. The amount of information that they can pull out of there is crazy. I mean, we're yeah, using so I think, uh, all kinds of that stuff. It's just insane. Yeah, I, th I think kind of the the change here is from the basic network administration that we used to provide and and you know assigning roles and permissions and those days seem to kind of be it, it's kind of changing over to this this sharepoint cloud-based environment that we all live and breathe in um and it's a it's a completely different administrative level uh and there's a lot of i mean you go into that microsoft admin center and it's just you can get buried, buried, buried. Oh my gosh! Yes. Levels of, and I'm like, I forgot what I went in here for, and it's just so. <laughs> that happens to me like every day. <laughs> it's, and I, I, I've gotten to points where I mean, I'm so deep into something, and it just says Microsoft gonna get a pop up. Like, are you sure you want to do this? Because you can block everybody out. I'm like, nope, close out. <laughs> like, you, <know? laughs> you gotta doubt yeah, yourself. Yeah, I know. And, and I, sometimes I'll get bored on the weekend, right? And I'll start mucking around, and then Monday morning, Justin's just like fit to be tied you know because right. he, he comes in and he's he's dealing with all the stuff i changed you know right um, so there's there's definitely some some level of confidence you need to have in your uh your your provider your msp or your internal it and um it, it's unfortunately like you're saying david the, the names are changing some you know often yeah they're, they're changing you know how things are done that you know I mean, I mean, gone, gone is um, um, Intune, right? Now it's 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 endpoint, endpoint manager, manager yeah. and and which which makes more sense to me, yeah, um, right, because it, it's a little more specific to what it is. 
but again, all these these nuances and changes that go on, you have to keep up with it because it's it's. I'm reading an article from as recently as 2021, and and go here and go here. Well, that's gone now. Yeah, uh, that, that going here and going here no longer exists. You have to do it this way now. So that's one of the challenges that we face. I, I will say this: um, you're right. It 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 is a vast ecosystem, and it can be uh, intimidating and and complicated. But yeah. by the same token the benefits are huge if you mm -hmm. get if you can get with a provider or somebody who who has a handle on that uh the things your business will be able to accomplish using those tools I, i'm sorry but for 20 some odd dollars a month i'm telling you it's insane what they're giving you like uh just the like i mean we talk about this all the time but i mean there's so many tools that are in these things that people don't even know or don't even use and don't even know exist yeah that they could be getting the value out of and and still be spending that 20 some dollars a month you know yeah. for that same and it's hard instance. you know at least for us it's hard today to talk to it could be a prospect a client or or whoever and have a conversation about, because we're we're trained to not be too technical to the people that yes. we service because we it just you don't want you, you don't want to lose them right but on the flip side of that that one of the challenges i, I think is the zero trust approach, the 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 XDR um, EDR uh, conversation, the 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 you know the backups, the the DLP, the IRM. It, it, you you go through all these acronyms, and it's like, you know, to them again, it's all white noise. And 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 but there's importance in every piece of this. So it's it's challenging for us to to try to to you know converse about this and and get that message across. Um, and, and that's a big part of that, I have to say, is building that client relationship and having that trust yeah. so that and, and, and understanding that we're not just giving you something that just to give you something so we can make a few dollars on it. It's a matter of us doing what we're supposed to be doing. And, and I'm, I'm working with with car dealerships now in this whole FTC safeguard. Um, but by December 9th, they have to have a myriad of things done by the end of the year. And it's, it's like, yeah, I mean, we're, some of our clients are in a good place because of that, because, because they've listened and followed our guidance. Sure. Right. Now, they're watching videos from, from, and they're uh, probably having a good time because they're like watching all their peers freak out and stress well, and struggle exactly. getting through it all. But they're exactly. like, ah, oh, we, this is done this is old news. <laughs> and they're watching videos from, from, um, that, that we see from, uh, NADA and NADA and, and basically telling them this, this is, this is a $300,000 plus investment. If you have nothing. So just be prepared to spend money, um, and and from the from the encryption side to the mandatory pen testing. You know who's heard of that on, on a from a car dealership? It's like yeah, this is now this all has to this is what has to be done and in place. So I mean, look, the bottom line is anymore, Brian. Uh, everybody needs to be doing these things because we're all so integrated and tied together, and it's it's about that supply chain I, I tell people every day like you know the whole thing oh we're too small you know i know we've been kind of fighting that objection for years and we've been trying yep. to figure out how to let people know but but the reality is it doesn't matter how small you are because you know other people you you either deal with other people or you know them or you communicate and those people know other people and they know people and it's like the commercial and i told two friends and they but i'm sorry sooner or later there's pay dirt right like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you're in a supply chain and you just you're mm -hmm. part of the deal and so that's it, it. It's you know, it's our narcissistic way of looking at things in the United States that people think hackers are after just the individual job, and it got nothing to do with you. It's a big picture, right? Like they're looking for the long haul. They're gonna get you, yes, but that's just a small piece of what it is they're trying to achieve today. They could care less if it's not you. It's gonna be somebody else. But yeah. they're gonna—that's a stepping stone to get where they really want to be. Yeah, and it's—it's. It's, I think we find ourselves trying to come up with, you know, um, when we try to explain what it is we're, we're looking to implement and how to implement it, and and we try to give examples that 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 are relatable to to you know so, so it gets so it's you know something that could be understood a little easier and i think the challenges still are um well if if this person doesn't have access to this file that's good enough for me and it's like well what you know it but if we can go one step further and say that that you know based on what we the tags we assign here Mm -hmm. that it can never happen it's, it's just not like you know and and 
again, it's, 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 it's the conversations are tough. They're definitely um, and, it and is. struggling. And I, I get the business owner's perspective. Like they kind of just put their hands up. Like, I, I, I don't know, you know, the two things that I have found uh, some success in uh, when it comes to that is a storytelling, like you're saying, like, you know, if you know of an example of whatever it is that they're talking about that you can bring to their, you know, relation so they understand yeah. that. Uh, but the other thing is I try and um, take executives, uh, like when I'm trying to explain, so here's the dilemma, right? The Microsoft cloud, um, there are people in the IT industry who don't know what the Microsoft cloud is completely. Right. Like uh, it's not, again, it's not, you know, for everybody, I guess. I don't know. I, I see no other way. To me, I don't know why you wouldn't be in the Microsoft Cloud. But but there are still folks who are technically adept, but don't know anything about the features or what all that stuff means up there in the cloud, what Azure AD is and why I care and all that. Yep. So what makes you think people are going to understand that, right? right? Like just generally, it's not going to happen. So what I do is I try and take them into a presentation on the back end where I'm showing them the insights, right? So, hey, let me show you what your people have been doing. Let me show you, you know, how your investment's paying off. Let, Let me them see that. Because Let them see that's that. what they yep. care about. And yep. they can relate to that, right? Yep. And so if they can start seeing that, then they know, oh, there's value back here. Like, Absolutely. Get it. Yeah. All right, very good. All right, man. Another one in the bucket. We did it. Got music in the background. That's our that's our cue to get off stage. That's our <laughs> get your get your FM DJ voice going. <laughs> Welcome to Midnight with there you go. Brian and Dave on the reboot. <laughs> awesome. I will right, we'll brainstorm for next week. Yes, sir. Good. And Sounds I'll cool. See you, uh, you got it. I'll see you next week. We'll talk about Sim next week. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. All right. Have a good one.